It is official. Uber is now delivering alcohol. If you didn't know, I actually do drive for Uber as a side hustle because it is good money that if I could just get my car and just kind of run with it. You know, there's one of those things that Rich Dad, Poor Dad author Robert Kiyosaki makes a point of that you have assets and you have liabilities. So you make your vehicle an asset when you use it for something that you make money back on. So you're putting money into something that makes money for you. So therefore, if I'm going to my job back and forth, that makes the car an asset as opposed to a liability. And when I do Uber, it also makes it further an asset, even during the pandemic when I am not driving to an office. So that's when I get the most out of the car. So I do it because I enjoy it. You know, really, I don't have to do it, but I really love to do it. That's just what it comes down to. So delivering alcohol now is available for the Uber Eats app for delivery people in select cities. Now, this is a thing across Canada, but it's already been allowed now officially to many other markets. So in my market where I'm in, in Miami, West Palm Beach, Florida, it's now allowed. So here's what they already have so you can understand what the alcohol process is here now at this point. So when you're delivering alcohol, you know, you have to worry about verifying the customer's identity and age and delivering to anyone without a valid government-issued photo ID shows they're above the age of majority. That's what's not need to be checked. So it's checking sobriety, making sure the customer's sober, looking for common signs of intoxication, requesting the ID, checking the identity, checking the customer's date of birth, and completing the trip. That's it. Now, I'm not sure how they actually do it where if you're dropping off, but at this point, we're actually dropping off orders. So it's not so much where we're actually meeting somebody in person and checking to make sure they have it. But really, it just comes down to that you're getting a check to the app. So any kind of delivery that's being done, I mean, we can't, Uber drivers can't be responsible for who's going to be consuming it. If it's been ordered by somebody to go to that house, then we have to hope that the person there is going to be picking it up. Now, I guess you could do a thing where you could try to ask for ID, but I haven't gotten to that point yet. But here's what they're saying about alcohol delivery anyway. So again, this is the same things they talk about. So it's checking sobriety. Again, you're looking for impaired reactions and coordination, stumbling, fumbling for their ID and slurred speech. And you request a uh, issued photo ID. It could be a driver's license, passport, you know, the normal stuff. Visual scan. And you check the customer's ID, hold it at a distance so you can visually scan the information you need. And then you check the identity and make sure that whom you're handing them alcohol matches the photo of the person on the ID. And that the eater name in your driver app matches the name on the ID that's been provided. Then the eater's date of birth. And then you complete the trip. Now, if you have any concerns, um, Driver app will automatically route you back to the restaurant or store to return the alcohol on the customer's behalf. And your fee will include payment for the entire trip, going back to the restaurant as well. But we don't know what's going on now. When it does change to the pandemic, I'm pretty sure you're still doing drop-off, contactless delivery. But the idea they're doing that, plus they just bought Postmates. Uber's making a lot of run right now for the delivery market. And the delivery market, I could tell you from my own point, it's the fact that it is making some good money. When I have done Uber, I've done it for two and a half years. Actually, almost three years, I think, coming up. And it's been fantastic. What it comes down to is, really, I don't know there's a lot of passengers that are being picked up these days. Obviously, weekdays, you have to just basically work off, you know, which hours are breakfast, lunch, dinner. But weekends are much more flowing. And for those of you Uber drivers, you know that. And I actually just saw something on TikTok is actually making up to $1,400 a week, driving 12 hours a day, 30 days straight. But this is the challenge he's putting on himself. But again, being able to make that much money. And on average, what I'm making on the deliveries right now is I'm making at least 40 to 50% on tips alone. Because everybody right now is tipping at least 20 to 30%, maybe 40% for their orders. And that's amazing. But that's what's happening right now. People are obviously seeing that if they do not want to leave the house, they don't want to put a mask on. They don't want to go ahead and make the drive to some restaurant. They want to be able to just get it brought to their house because people are getting a lot lazier thanks to the pandemic. So this only benefits someone like me. And I'll take that. I can appreciate it. All right. So somebody on comments actually told me, can I, have a, can I give a proper outro? Well, subscribe to the channel, like or dislike, and Feel free to tell other people about it. Share the video with whomever, however you like. And also make sure to go ahead and look at the description so you can help me so you can donate to my Bitcoin, to cryptocurrency. 
Look, look for the link in the description to the show, audio or video. Remember, it's always available through Anchor.fm, and it's distributed all over the place through every major podcast portal and, of course, right here on YouTube. And I'll talk to you next time.